I'm Dr. Greg Emerson, and I've spent time as a professional basketball player, traveller, and ER physician. What fires me up these days, though, is keeping myself as healthy and energetic as possible. Here's a sneak peek at a recent talk I did to a group of doctors in Japan. I'm a huge fan of setting goals. Um, when you set a goal for yourself, there are three things that a goal must have. First uh, is a result. You've got to have a result. You've got to have, uh, be very clear in your mind what the goal is that you want. Here's my goal, to leave the world, and I've had a lot of goals in the past, but this is the most important goal for me now. To leave the world a better place when I leave than when I arrived. That's my ultimate goal. And to minimise my footprint while I'm here. Second thing a goal has to have is a purpose. Because if you don't know why you want the result, then you'll never get it. So very, very important to be clear in your mind why you want that goal. I think that my purpose is because otherwise there's no future for the human empire. Now I said human empire very specifically rather than human race because the human race will survive, but it's not going to survive in the way that it is at the moment. And that, that's, not, that's not up for debate, that is a fact. It's a matter of when that will have to not if. So it's a, uh, it's a matter of um, looking after ourselves uh, because we cannot continue the way we're going. And the third thing you have to have for uh, a goal is a massive action plan. That's how you're going to get your goal. So we're going to run through that as well, what I'm doing. But let me run you through a little bit of what I'm doing at the moment. I eat differently to most people. No, not always. When I come home, I'm home, I relax. But when I'm at home, I eat differently. I try to eat local. I only, uh, try to eat foods which are produced uh, by producers who are around me. I try to eat as much wild food as I can. Uh, I'm pretty much always organic unless I'm away on holiday. I only eat grass-fed um, meat. I eat foods which are very, very nutrient dense. Um, there's a lot of calories in uh, a can of Coca-Cola. There's a lot of calories in a can of Coca-Cola? <coughs> Yes, there is. Is there a lot of nutrients in a can of Coca-Cola? No, exactly. So that's not a nutrient, very nutrient-dense food. Uh, but something like an avocado. There's a lot of calories in avocado, but there's also a lot of nutrients. So that's a nutrient-dense food. And I eat a lot of avocados. I try and uh, eat a lot of unprocessed food. I try and minimise how much impact I have on the food. Because when you start to change the food, you start to denature it. So I eat, in some way, I eat a lot of grass-fed organic meats from local farmers. I eat a lot of organic fruits and vegetables from local farms. I eat organic free-range eggs from local producers. I eat a lot of nuts and seeds. I eat the produce that I make in my, that I grow in my own garden, and I have a lot of superfoods, which I'll explain to you in a second. I mainly drink spring water, and there's no doubt that spring water is the only drink that we should be, the water we should be drinking as soon as you start drinking. And I don't drink out of plastic bottles because plastic bottles are full of bisphenol A. Bisphenol A leaks into the water, and bisphenol A was developed in the 1930s as an estrogen replacement drug. So you're drinking a lot of estrogen when you have something out of plastic bottle. So I try and get spring water out of a uh, glass bottle, or I go and collect my own spring water and put it into glass bottles. Spring water means it's, come, it's been under the ground for 10,000 years and has slowly made its way to the surface, getting through the rocks and the cracks, picking up a lot of minerals on the way. Uh, it's the only thing that we should be drinking. I drink a lot of herbal infusions, which basically means I take that spring water and I gently simmer some herbs in there. Um, and I use that as a base of my elixirs, which is a, basically a, a, uh, I put the uh, herbal water in a blender and I put in some superfoods as well. These are some of the food superfoods that uh, I, I use regularly and that all of us should be doing because as doctors we should be leaders in this area. I have a lot of bone broth. If you're eating a chicken and you're throwing away the bones, you're uh, throwing away one of nature's most valuable resources. As soon as you, traditional populations have used bone broth for centuries, if not thousands of years, all you have to do is put the bones uh, in, a, in some water in a slow cooker, put in a little bit of um, uh, vinegar as a bit of acidity to pull the nutrients out of the bones, put in a couple of vegetables, some goji berries, and you leave it on for 24, 48 hours just slowly bubbling away, that pulls all of the minerals, the chondroitin, the glucosamine, out of the bones. And you can use that as a bone broth. It comes out as a gelatinous-like substance, uh, which you can then use as basic stews and soups. Uh, it's nature's multivitamin, it's nature's chondroitin and glucosamine. 
Um, I have a lot of bee products, I have bee pollen, I have uh, propolis, I have uh, royal jelly. Uh, bee pollen obviously is this, the, uh, the pollen that the bee collects, brings back to the hive. Propolis is the material that the bee manufactures to gum up the hive to keep fungus and parasites out. It is more, it has been, in a recent study, it's been shown to be more antifungal than um, nystatin, and that includes fungal organisms which are resistant to nystatin. Uh, I have a lot of aloe vera. Aloe vera is an incredible food. Uh, I put it on my skin and I, I have it internally. It's very, very anti-parasitic. They did a study recently with a whole lot of farmers in, from the high veld in South Africa, and they said, what is the main way that you keep your animals free of parasites? And, and aloe vera was the number one way of doing that. Uh, it's also phenomenally anti-cancer. It's been shown last year to be very, very protective against melanoma. Um, I have a lot of chlorella, which is a algae, which has been shown to remove heavy metals from the body. I have an extraordinary amount of chocolate. I probably eat more chocolate than anybody else in Australia. I, I want to, you know, um, say that is raw cacao with any sugar. To make chocolate, you take raw cacao, uh, which has been known by the Aztecs as, as uh, heart blood, uh, because they realised thousands of years ago that cacao was about as best thing you can ever do for your heart. Uh, to make chocolate, you take raw cacao, you boil it up and alter some of the fats, you add in some sugar, you add in some milk, and uh, that's chocolate. But if you want to get the real health benefits from cacao, you just have it raw. Uh, it's, uh, it's very energizing, and as I said, it is about as good for the heart that you can get. And also have a lot of pomegranate. Pomegranate's been shown in clinical studies to actually reverse atherosclerosis. One of the few things that can do that. So if you're taking some fish oil, some pomegranate cacao, you're doing more for your heart than, uh, than you can ever imagine. And all my heart patients I see, they all go on cacao, they go, all go on pomegranate, they all go on fish oil. That's a, uh, this is why I have superfoods. Superfoods are foods which not only um, taste good, but uh, they also have a therapy and give you nutrients, but they also have a therapeutic benefit. This is a Karelian photograph of a goji berry. Um, a lot of energy that you can see in the goji berry. It's a Karelian photograph of a cacao nut. Uh, again, you can imagine the energy that we're getting from cacao nuts. And that's a clear photograph of a, a drop of coconut oil. Now, coconut is, uh, is used to be always known by traditional populations as the food that gives you everything that you need. It's phenomenally good for the thyroid. It's a phenomenally healthy saturated fat, and I have a lot of coconut. It's very, very antifungal. 